One of the big questions about the 2022 midterm elections has been as we get past the primaries, what do the general elections look like? Pennsylvania is a great example. In Pennsylvania, we had very prominent primaries uh, for the governor's race. Uh, this guy, Doug Mastriano, who is essentially a, a big lie, a January 6th rioter. That, that, that's essentially what he is. Uh, Doug Mastriano won the Republican primary for governor in Pennsylvania and will now face Josh Shapiro. But the question is, well, how is that race looking uh, in the Republican Senate race? Mehmet Oz was endorsed by Trump, won ultimately won a very, very close primary. But the question is, how is Oz faring against John Fetterman, the overwhelming victor in the Democratic primary for the Pennsylvania Senate? What does it look like for November? We finally have those numbers. And it really depends on whether you want to be a glass half full or glass half empty sort of person uh, when it comes to these polls, whether we say that it's looking good or that it's not looking good. So let's look at the polls, which we've been waiting for for a long time. Uh, the Post Gazette reports Democrats John Fetterman and Josh Shapiro lead Republicans Mehmet Oz and Doug Mastriano in the first big Pennsylvania general election poll. Okay, that's good. The Democrats are winning for uh, the general election. Well, but how much? Well, this is where it's maybe not quite so good in the Senate contest. Democratic candidate John Fetterman, Pennsylvania sitting lieutenant governor, is up by nine over Republican Mehmet Oz, the celebrity cardiothoracic surgeon. That's 46 to 37 with 13 percent of respondents undecided. OK, that's the Senate race in the race for governor. Democrat Josh Shapiro, the state attorney general, leads Republican Doug Mastriano, a state senator, by a slimmer margin by four, 44 to 40, with 13 percent of respondents again declaring themselves undecided. OK, so we have the numbers. Are these numbers good or are these numbers bad? I can genuinely make two completely different cases to you about this. Let me make to you the most optimistic case. The Republican primaries got way more attention than the Democratic primaries. Josh Shapiro was unopposed. John Fetterman was expected to easily win, and he did. Despite all of the attention on the Republican primaries, the Democrats are still winning. Josh Shapiro is arguably much less well known than Doug Mastriano. He didn't have any kind of like major endorsement that I'm aware of, like uh, Mastriano had Trump's. And despite all of that, all of that attention, all of the name recognition, the Democrats are still winning and they're winning both races. Great. OK, but wow, David, sir, thank you for the optimistic case. Now, what's the pessimistic case? Well, the pessimistic case is uh, Fetterman is winning by nine, but there's 13 percent undecided. And Pennsylvania is, although it has typically typically leaned blue to the left, um, it doesn't always. And 13 percent undecided is not particularly good. And nine percent is not a comfortable lead there. And then when you look at the gu gubernatorial race, you can make an even more pessimistic case, which is wait a second. Despite the fact that Mastriano is quite literally a rioter in the sense that he allegedly uh, uh, passed and breached police barricades in D.C. on January 6th, despite that, he's only losing by four with 13 percent undecided. That's a disaster because the general campaigns are only just starting. This is really not good. Now, which of the two cases do I lean towards? I lean slightly to the pessimistic case. We have a situation in the United States right now where Mastriano was a participant at the insurrection. He spent over three thousand dollars to bus over 100 Trump supporters to D.C. on January 6th. He was seen crossing police barricades uh, despite denying it. And even despite all of that, he's only losing by four and 13 percent are still undecided because we are in an era where these things are no longer disqualifying. Think of the Hollywood access, the access Hollywood tape with Donald Trump in the past that would have ended many elected officials or potential elected officials careers. And Trump went on to become president of the United States and almost to get himself reelected. So. Is it better that the two Democrats in Pennsylvania are winning rather than losing? Of course, it's better. If they were losing. It would be an even bigger disaster. But these leads, particularly the Mastriano lead, uh, the Mastri the, the Josh Shapiro lead over Mastriano, rather, these are not comfortable leads in any sense. 
So when we think about where is there a race that we can really kind of make a difference? And we've talked about this whole Marcus Flowers versus Marjorie Taylor Greene thing. Marcus Flowers is a fine candidate against Marjorie Taylor Greene in Georgia. But as many people have written in, it's not really likely that being such a red district, pouring money in for Marcus Flowers or phone banking is going to remove Marjorie Taylor Greene. And I, I never say give up on a race, but it is statistically true that that's a big uphill battle. If efforts were concentrated on the really important races, this one in Pennsylvania could be huge because number one, Fetterman versus Oz could decide who controls the Senate for the next two years. And the governor of Pennsylvania could decide who wins Pennsylvania uh, in 2024, the real winner or whoever Doug Mastriano wants to see. These are really consequential races. Does it not make more sense to put our efforts there? It's a question that we're going to have to figure out as we get closer to November and then into 2024. Let me know what you think. Find me on Twitter at D Pacman, but at least they're not losing. That's what we can say so far. Science has shown us that lowering your body temperature at night improves sleep in many ways. Our sponsor, Chili Sleep, creates systems that cool down your bed, promoting deeper, higher quality sleep. It also just feels great. I use it at home. I'd recommend it to anyone, and I've recommended it to some friends who now use it as well. Chili Sleep's product, the Uller, the Cube, and the Doc Pro, they're all water based, temperature controlled pads that fit onto your existing mattress. You can keep your bed as low as 55 degrees, as hot as 115 degrees. I like 60. Their new Doc Pro sleep system has double the cooling power of other models, five times the cooling contact, whisper quiet. You can control it with your phone. It's awesome. With chilly sleep, there's no more feeling hot at night, no more sweating. Cooling your bed down like this is amazing. You really have to try it for yourself. When you go to chillysleep.com slash Pacman, you'll get 30% off the Uller and Cube sleep systems and 10% off the new Doc Pro. This offer is only for my audience. The link is down below.